There's an infinite number of universes out there. In many of them, there is a podcast by us. In one of them, it's good. Please enjoy. So the Super Blue Blood Moon was on the other day. Uh, what was your experience with it? I was driving home from work and I got home real late and I got out of my vehicle and I looked up at the sky and it was a little cloudy, but then the clouds parted and through the clouds, I saw the light of a thousand suns beaming down around my city. And I looked around and I saw the eyes of the people around me glowing and they came towards me with a hunger I had never seen before and I started to run as they chased me into the night and as I ran through the night these creatures hungry for my flesh grabbed at me and tore at my clothes and as the light dawned on the new day I realized the world was over. How was yours? Oh it was pretty average it was cloudy I didn't say much. Welcome to But Yo with Eamon and Zeb. I'm Eamon. I'm Zeb. And this week is a very special week, as it always is. But first, I just want to jump in and say thank you all for listening because we've cracked a thousand downloads and it's, yeah, just really, it's just really nice to know that. And it's really awesome. And if you want to come talk to us on Twitter, we're at But Yeah Pod. And we just like to sort of engage with anyone who's listening. Um, come and chat to us because we love you and we want to thank you for downloading our show. Um, just quickly, though, I want to do a quick call back to last week's um, conversation where we were talking about what your favorite alternative vape tricks are. And I put like a couple polls around the social medias we're on um, and I got some interesting responses. So um, the winner of the poll for favorite alternative vape tricks was doing the dragon firework from Lord of the Rings, but with a vape, <laughs> which I would love to see. The second most popular was kickflip. <laughs> <laughs> there was also like Ollie in there somewhere. There was also Ollie 360 vaping a ship into a bottle and first aid resuscitation. Oh man, that's the, probably the most useful, really. <laughs> like, I mean, it's not the best one, but really it's a good one to know. Yeah. Um, so today is... Weatherman's Day. February 5th. So Weatherman's Day, it's, it's a day to honor, you know, our weatherman. People don't honor our weatherman enough. They just sort of, we look at him for five minutes. Uh, I mean, me, me as a millennial, I don't. Uh, I get all my weather through my little phone. I guess that's my weatherman. It just says 21 degrees rainy and I go, thanks, weatherman. I assume there is no humans anywhere in the process that makes this. But I still thank you. So I think in, in the spirit of weatherman's day, every weatherman gets the day off and we tell them the weather, I think. Oh, man. Which probably like probably <laughs> results in a lot of like disasters of people not knowing when it's going to rain anywhere or or it results in like no difference because there's probably like a 50 percent hit rate anyway <laughs> yeah with weather that's how it feels we're gonna be dunking on weatherman all day so we can't be worse than weather <laughs> thank you weatherman i changed my mind weatherman i don't like you <laughs> you let me down too much Weatherman's Day is now the day where we expect more of you. Well, it's funny, like, it's been a hot, a hot summer boy. Man, it's a hot one. Here in Australia. Constant heat. Constant heat. But then this weekend, the weather was like, it's going to be extra sunny. Time for some sunny activities. And it rained. <laughs> it, it's still raining. There's, there's clothes out on the clothesline there. Just waiting for that sweet, radiant heat. Sad and betrayed. By the weatherman. So did you know that the history of measuring weather in the United States of America, not very relevant to us, I guess, in Australia, but um, in America, it goes back to 1774 when John Jefferies, the man with the most generic name in the world, um, <laughs> made one of the first weather observations and recorded it. <laughs> it looks kind of it looks kind of cloudy. <laughs> Writes it down. <laughs> cloudy today. <laughs> Rainy. Right, it's down rainy. The stew was fine. <laughs> Jeffries was also the first to fly in a balloon over the city of London. Oh. Okay, Jeffries. I'm going to need you to decide which country you devote your citizenship to first. Random side note from that. I mean, I don't know which one he's from. He does sound very... That's a very American name, I feel. That Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, John Jeffries. Um, but like, if you're going to be a weather balloonsman... Then I guess you really need to understand what the weather is. Wait, hold up. When you're a weatherman, do you fly in the balloon? 
I assume. Isn't that how they find the weather out? Is that what a weather balloon is? Like the guy literally goes up with the balloon and <laughs> has like a little notepad? Yeah, I assume. It's kind of like, um, you know, like any animal documentary. Like um, David Attenborough, but... Sky date, 23. It is very moist up here again. <laughs> I'm running out of supplies. Johnson finished off the last of my jerky. He retreated from our base to go find more food up in the sky, and he hasn't returned. Like, originally, they were just people searching for sky gold, but incidentally, they got good at, like, knowing what weather it was. Ah, <sighs> gotta have that sky gold. Like, you know when you, it's sunset and you get that nice beam of light fly out of the sun? Yeah, that's sky gold. That's sky gold. You can actually go get it. It's what people, um, like, thought that leprechauns were after for a long time, but it turns out it's scientifically accurate <laughs> and it's really useful in science. Leprechauns were actually, ne- um, like, this was the American, first American weatherman, but this is the first, the, the leprechauns are the first Irish weatherman. Ah, okay. We- weather Weathermen? Because they'd be like... But it seemed more like they sort of generated weather, I guess, or I don't know. They were like, now it's a rainbow. Woo! Wait, did did leprechauns follow the rainbows or just create them for you to go follow? I feel like they create I mean They love rainbows. If they were if they were if they were following the rainbows, that's gonna be a hard job because they always have to bury their gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> and the rainbows move. <laughs> They'd be just like getting all around chasing these rainbows so they can bury their gold. They'd finally sit down for a rest. They're they're it's done. And then the rainbow just sort of fades away and then appears down the road a little bit. And they're like... Ugh. Yeah, I like to think it's like Fortnite or Player Unknown's Battlegrounds <laughs> where there's like a timer and they have to get between zones in time to bury their gold. I'd play that. <laughs> Leprechaun's gold simulator. <laughs> Eventually all the rainbows point to one spot. I think to succeed, all you would have to do is bury your gold in time. And if you don't make it there on time, you lose. Like in the concept of time? Within the two minutes between when the rainbow moves. <laughs> like you just go to where it goes. Oh, like you just have to bury it. Okay, so you just have to... The rainbow keeps moving and you keep chasing it forever until you successfully bury it within the rainbow before it leaves. Yeah. Thus locking the rainbow there and catching the rainbow. Yeah, exactly. And then the rainbow leads to the pot of gold and then you charge people for a chance at it. Yeah. So the term weatherman is... It's, it's pretty well known. But like, what if... What if we come up with a new one? A more inclusive one? Yeah, I mean, it's 2018. I don't think we need man in anything. Like, we got man out of everything else, like waiter man. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> I can't remember any man terms. Um, I've erased them from my own mind. That's what I've done. You have police folk. Fire people. Yeah, we have those fire boys. <laughs> the gender neutral fire boys. <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> Boys is kind of gender neutral. Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. But yeah, we threw this up on Twitter and uh, to see what other people thought might be some cool cool weather names. And what did we get? From Florence and Diane from Paper News Out Loud, we got the Psychics of the Sky, um, Nimbus and the Storm Clouds, Umbrella Peddlers, I like that one a lot, and the Storm Cloud Rebellion, all of which incidentally are excellent band names. <laughs> the Storm Cloud Rebellion. Yeah, especially. I really like that. And then Alex Flanagan from Cryptid Keeper gave us Storm Boys, Tornado Alley Rejects, another great band name. Oh, yeah. Cloud Fighters, and the Darling of Darlings of the Green Screen, <laughs> which is- There is a- um, That's amazing. I like that one. There is a music project called Cloud Kicker. Which is close enough. Man. They are like a fave of Reddit. That's a lot more active though. It's like it's like weathermen that are um, imp- actively impacting the weather. Is the role of the weatherman changing? Are they there to impact the weather or just to tell you what the weather is? Yeah. Like they say news in news, they shouldn't editorialize. What if a weatherman decides to alter the weather? Yeah, like it becomes like that precogs um, talk show thing you were talking about. Where the, ma- the weatherman comes on every week and he's like... All right, kids, this is going to be the weather for the week. So get ready. I'm not in a good mood. Rain there, storms here, and a nice sunny um, afternoon for for this city that I live in. <laughs> because my grandma lives there and I, I love my Grammy. Yeah, I guess we're starting to redefine what weathermen could be. I mean, as time goes on, it's gonna, it is going to shift. I do like some of, these, there's some of the other ones that I saw here was also lightning tighteners. That's one of yours. What's that one? Oh, that's like... Because, <laughs> like, I assume lightning comes out of a valve and every now and then it gets a bit too loose and the lightning starts going crazy. And the weatherman gets sent up to go... Ee, ee, ee. <laughs> the year is 2170. And um, to create the ideal situations for the planet, 
we have to have these constructs that control the weather. And one of the crews is called the Lightning Titaners, and they have to go around all the electrical bases and make sure the lightning's working properly. Because <laughs> if you get that, you get that loose lightning. That's not what you want. Yeah, it's just all saggy and hits a bit slow. <laughs> it's just flapping all over the place. You need that tight lightning that just shoots down from the sky into the perfect spot. You also got the rain grapplers, <laughs> like people who just like <laughs> wrestle with the rain, I guess. Well, again, the year is 2170 and <laughs> raindrops. <laughs> the same <laughs> premise. So what we have is we have a number of robots that drop from the sky covered in water collection things and they fall um, sometimes they escape and we have this team that has to recollect (laughs) these giant balls of water surrounding these robots (laughs) like steve Irwin tackling crocodiles but it's these guys yeah like get back here tackling sentient water balls sentient water balls is another good band name (laughs) (laughs) also like windy windy goes windy goes windy goes they're like windy goes but but they're windy i guess really windy like, yeah. <laughs> I also like to envision them as like the hydrogen detectives who just sort of like, I imagine them as just big noses. They don't really have face. And they just sort of go, <laughs> <laughs> sort of sniff out that weather. I guess they're dogs. They're just doggos. Yeah. Now to now to the council of dogs, and they what weather is it? And they like start barking and like getting excited because it's sunny. Oh, you don't want to be in the council of dogs when a storm is rolling in. <laughs> it's just like. Rawr, 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 rawr. Yeah, it'll just fl- let now to the council of doggos and they're just freaking the fuck out <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just like an office space normally the dogs are well behaved but when there's a storm it's just like they're leaping all over the tables <laughs> <laughs> or just hiding or just just generally being unpleasant um but anyway as time goes on though we've got so i don't know what's your favorite out of those have you got what, what's they're all really good. I actually quite like a lot of them. Well, as far as a proper name for them, I think weather folk is good. I think we could bring folk back into yeah. the common word. It sounds. It makes me think of like they're farmers, like they're weather farmers. They're out there farming the good weather. Yeah. Just instead of tilling the land, they're tilling the sky. In the future, eventually we're going to have that crossover from reporting the weather to controlling the weather for sure. Like one day, like given enough years, we'll be able to do something with that. So at that point... The weather folk become these people who report what is going to be, I think. Yeah, (laughs) because they influence it. Not just report what it's going to be, they make it. Well, what I think (laughs) happens... Maybe it's a conspiracy. Maybe they do it with, um, like, you know, chemtrails or, like, a wizard machine or just actual wizards or one man stands... or one weather folk, (laughs) not necessarily a man, who knows, um, stands apart from the other weather folk um as a result of a rigorous breeding program and they'd be called weather man <laughs> <laughs> like a superhero tell me more about this weather man <laughs> um uh, you know it's basically captain planet okay i imagine but maybe with a better hairstyle captain planet but kind of like a reboot where he's got instead of a mullet is he one of those superheroes that only kind of has powers but he's just real strong and has a lot of money, so he just has this really powerful vape. <laughs> yeah, it's a, like it's a magical vape that influences the weather. Not magical, like a science fiction-y vape that controls the weather. So we have this crew of the villainous um, people called the Weather Boys, I think. And they're rolling into town with their bad lightning and weather and things like that. And I guess in this case, Weatherman would use his vape set on reverse and suck all the <laughs> bad weather in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and then he would expel that good weather that we want. Yeah, or he just takes it into himself and, like, he gets quite unhealthy for a little bit. Like, yeah. Oh, you're looking a bit stormy. He's like, oh, oh. Or it's like you play a specific, like, vape, like, trick. Like, a, instead of, like, blowing a vape ring, but, like, it, it flies out and, like, wraps him up, catches him. <laughs> and, or it just does a series of set commands Kind of like an ocarina from like Legend of Zelda But instead of like an ocarina of time It's a, a vape of weather Oh god! Basically Captain Planet again Probably have all the elements Although fire isn't really a weather No, fire is more like a tragedy Yeah, it's like sun, sunny Although you do get like fiery hurricanes Really? Like how often? Oh, I don't know, but I <laughs> is, is, that, is, that less, is that less weather and more I've definitely seen some video where a hurricane or a tornado sucked up a fire somewhere And it was like Although, if, but if we go into that territory We start going into the territory where you can start making salmon hurricanes and sharknadoes Yeah, but I don't want to talk about sharknado Let's move on but the, the salmon, that's a thing that happened. The salmon, the salmon rain. Yeah, it was delicious. 
<laughs> just they reckon it sucked up a heap of like frozen fish from I don't know Canada or something, and then rained them out. Oh, okay. That that could be one of his specific vape tricks. It's going to be hard for those salmon to return to their breeding grounds. <laughs> I kind of imagine this guy's a lot like Aquaman, actually. Oh man, that's a good Pixar movie. The salmon in Canada, <laughs> one of them gets picked, or a bunch of them get picked up by a tornado and taken down to the south of the US. <laughs> to make their way north. <laughs> and then it has to make its way back. So it's like Brother Bear meets meet Finding Nemo. <laughs> yeah, meets Sharknado. <laughs> meets Sharknado. And obviously there's going to be some nod to Sharknado as he's flying through it. <laughs> he, he, Sharknado. The character. Yeah, the Sharknado. <laughs> the Sharknado. You remember that superhero movie, The Sharknado? <laughs> remember how they used to call it, like, Ian Thorpe the Thorpedo? You remember that ad campaign where they were, like, <laughs> talking to kids about cereal or something? And they are like, and Thorpey thinks it's really sick. And the kids were like, yeah! <laughs> Thorpey used to be such a political force in our country. Oh, uh, the world was very strange ten years ago. Thorpey was in control. Everyone was swimming every day. <laughs> back, when he, back when he ruled the, the seas. Lots of roads were converted into swimming pools. Did something happen with Ian Thorpe? Are we supposed to, like, not talk? We, is he boycotted these days? You never hear about him. I have no idea, but to amend that lack of information, I'm just going to say he probably dived off and then, like... Got edited into a video with that um, that song that goes, and that's where he is now. <laughs> yeah, just doing that forever. Anyway, speaking of weather, um, growing up where we did, we'd get a lot of like crazy weather. Not hurricanes and stuff, but sort of unique to our area. We'd have like floods and random stuff like that. Like everyone, everyone has their characteristic bad weather, I guess. Like in Australia, we don't get you know. Hurricanes or earthquakes, so I guess our bad weather isn't as bad as Americans often get it. But like, we don't even get snow blizzards. We never get snowed in, but we get floods. They're pretty gnarly. If you're in um, England or Britain, it's like when it's when it's hot and you're like, ugh, it's 20 degrees out. That's so horrible. <laughs> yeah, we get heat waves and floods. We're purely fire and fire and water elementals here. Yeah. But we used to have the annual flood where Eamon and I grew up, sort of out bush. We were a little bit rural. But like rainforesty rural, not like red desert rural, like not Mad Max rural, more. There's no movie that really represents the kind of part of Australia we're from, is there? Um, hmm. Foresty world. But we used to get the annual flood and the river would come up and it would take out the bridge, which led us in the school. Yeah, it was the best. <laughs> so instead of snow days, we'd get flood days. We're like, heck yeah, the bridge doesn't work. We can't get to school. <laughs> and then like sometimes you wouldn't be able to get into town or get food or anything like that. I think way out the very end where you were, you did, I remember someone talking about who else who lived there. They had a bread making machine because occasionally you would, couldn't, wouldn't get into town uh, yeah. for like a week. Did that ever happen with you? Um, yeah, we got stuck for like three or four days at a time every now and then, like every year or two. And I would end up like... <laughs> We'd end up, like, eating rice or potatoes or something the whole time. Each other. And and then each other. And then, like, um, at some point, I was trying to have cups of tea and we were out of sugar. And I was like, oh, I need my sweet juice. <laughs> and so we ended up having strawberry jam in our tea. <laughs> and that was interesting. If it was, do you recommend it? If you like strawberry jam a lot, I guess. But if you like strawberry jam as much as a sane person, <laughs> no, I don't recommend <laughs> it at all. Don't do it. Oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah. It's better than that bad bitter tea, even though that's what I drink now. <laughs> back in I think at the time I had a higher sugar um, threshold. Yeah, back then. Um, yeah, well, occasionally the bridge would just sort of wash out. I remember one time, it literally, like, you got, we got there and the bridge was sideways. This is the big bridge that got into the town was sideways. They were like, oh, I guess no school. <laughs> and they were like, it's going to take at least two months to replace this bridge. And they went... No, we got it. And they sort of just, we came out and they literally just pushed it back into place. Look up in the sky, everybody. It's Weatherman. And then he vapes the, bi the bridge back into place. He came down to save everyone. Like, no, no, we want to do serious construction. And he just sort of pushed it back into place. <laughs> there. And they're like, no, stop. And he pushed it all the way back down. And they went, it'll do. And they went, I guess. Well, now we don't have an excuse to replace it. Thanks, yeah. Weatherman. <laughs> The council went, good, no money for that. <laughs> they threw the, threw the dust cloud down and all the construction work was like, damn. <laughs> and then we kept driving across it, that rickety ass bridge. I wasn't there that day. That sounds wild. That was, it wasn't, it was over a couple of days. Like, it just, I remember just seeing them literally, like, it just looked so dodgy. <laughs> but yeah, we had that. We had the regular, that was the more standard level strange weather events. 
We also had a day back in 2009. We had the day Australia turned yellow, uh, which yeah. was all west side of Australia, essentially. Do you remember that? Yeah, Simpsons craze swept across the nation. We got Simpsons for the first time. Yeah, but in the form of dust colouring the whole world. Yeah. Um, I woke up to it and it was instantly explained to me that there'd been dust blown up, but I wish it hadn't been because it was literally like a sepia filter on the whole world for a whole day. Um, yeah, I actually remember that. It was it was yellow. Like I, It's the kind of memory which I forget about, but then someone mentions it and I go, what? And I look up images thinking it was a dream and wasn't real, but it was. Yeah. If you look up 2009 dust storm, Australian dust storm images, there's some weird crap. That's not a filter. That's actually photos of the, everything was just yellow. Yeah, I have a, rem- a memory of being in like a playground and like looking up at, into the distance and it being real yellow. And it feels like I'm like in a video game where you have to, where they're like trying to hide the fact that they can't process that much level at a time. <laughs> yeah. Ironically, that's very like Mad Max, actually. Yeah. <laughs> sort of the Mad Max filter is on for that day. They did use it, but they dialed it up too loud. So that was pretty crazy. Yeah. Other than that, like just the annual floods. That was pretty good. Plenty of power outs. Lots of power outs where we were. You get a lot of power. I remember once I was at university. Um, which was a, a hop, a hopscotch away from that town by an hour, but enough to still get power outs, I guess. I was there, there was an eclipse happening. I don't know. I can't remember exactly. This is a few years ago. Some eclipse is happening. It was one of the ones you can't look at. It was on like, I was looking on the computer and doing an assignment on the other tab. Mm. I had the cool big enough screen that I could split it into two halves. And like, just as the eclipse peaked, all the power went out. <laughs> and I think it might've been near one of the, one of the apocalypses that we were getting that was so popular back near 20, 2013 and it was really weird everyone just sort of looked at each other and went uh, uh, uh do we um, burn down uh, or wait do we riot do we start robbing when do we loot do we loot now um and we like stepped out i stepped out of the library and everyone was sort of coming out just it was like the end of a movie after all the zombies wake up and go wait we're people and everyone was just sort of just <laughs> a little bit confused a little bit scared except for ted over there who's like <laughs> Except for Cannibal Ted. Yeah, but he was always like that. Anyway, speaking of the weather, um, now for a word from our sponsors. This millennium at roughly 3pm, the old ones will awake. They are hungry, they are ready, and they have been waiting far too long. Thank you for tuning in to Weather from the Void. For the next millennium, the following weather will apply... A temperature of one Kelvin. Mild erasure from existence. Slightly sunny. Scattered showers. And fear the old ones as they stir from their slumber and consume these worlds. Saturn. Cumulo 9. James. Thank thank you. you. What's in your ears right now, huh? Garbage words and wood mice? Wood mice whispering garbage words? Garbage whispering about wood mice. Clear out your canals with the dulcet tones of Florence and Diane in paper news out loud. Nourish your mind. Give your neurons something to munch on. We provide you with things you never knew you needed to know. And none of the things you actually need to know, but might be fun to sprinkle into conversations with interdimensional beings. Think weirder thoughts and listen to paper news out loud. Available on iTunes, Spotify, your friendly neighborhood void, or wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back with the But Yeah podcast. What did you do during your break, Zeb? I never know how to respond to that one. Well, you had a break. You were gone for like three hours and now you're back. What have you been doing? Oh, right. I I went and stood in the cupboard. Oh, really? (laughs) I waited. Oh, okay. So what do you do? What do you do when we're not recording? Oh, well, I go out. I do some business. I buy a newspaper. I read it. I sell it off to someone fifty years later as an antique. Name one newspaper. Uh name one newspaper, sir. The Daily. The Daily. <laughs> the Daily. Um. So, do you have anything else to say about weather? Because I got something else to talk about. I don't know whether you know what I what I weather. I prepped our next segment. Awesome. What is it? Uh, it's a mini version of this podcast I'm thinking of recording, and we're currently doing test episodes of called One Letter Better, which is kind of like um something a lot of radio shows and stuff have done. I've heard. Apparently, Hamish and Andy have done it in the past. It's kind of just it's a pretty big thing. It's a pretty 
standard thing. Um, so we take uh, a movie, TV, a song, or a podcast title and add, move, remove, or change one letter and make it a lot better. Or worse. Or, well, yeah. Hopefully better. It's one one letter. We could call it one letter. <laughs> <laughs> one letter different. <laughs> So I guess we'll just jump right in and do a mini version of that here because I think it's really fun. We've already done one, and that was really fun. Yeah. Um, so, but that but that's a secret. It's not out there in the real world. No, it doesn't. It's a super. It's deep web. If you type like the IP address of it and just keep scanning through all these different IP addresses, you might find it, but I doubt it. Um, so pick one of these. Uh, I'm eyeing some of them, but I think you've probably got an idea on what you want to do. Yeah, no, no, no. It's got to be Forrest Gump. It has to be Forrest Gump. What's what's one letter better? Yeah, look, the rules, you can just replace one letter or even move it somewhere else. Add, move, remove, or change, I've decided. Yeah. Um, so first, uh, how have you been going, Zeb? Good. Then let's jump straight into who wants to be a millionaire with... All right, let's play. <laughs> Answer the question. Okay, how are you? I'm good. All right. Cool. So make it make a Forrest Gump cooler then. Um, so what do you know about Forrest Gump first? Oh, you know, he did a lot of things. He, Have you seen it? Most history, it seems that actually Forrest Gump did it based on that movie. Oh, uh, what? Oh, like any any historical event that happened over the last 50 years, Forrest Gump secretly did it. Ah, oh, right. Like That's the- basically the plot of the movie. Am I remembering it wrong? What's then... Um- Also, he ate some chocolate. He did eat some chocolate. Am I remembering something to do with him and the JFK assassination? I think something happened there, but maybe you're misremembering that. Honestly, I don't remember. Oh, okay. Sorry, Forrest. I think think he, like, he, like, gave, like, Martin Luther King the idea to be a revolutionary or something (laughs) ridiculous like that. I I don't think that actually happened. I don't remember. Or, like, JFK was about to head out in his motorcade, and he was, like... Not sure whether he should go out today. And Forrest was like, go on, JFK. I believe in you. You can do it. I don't think Forrest Gump had negative impacts on the world like that. <laughs> That's just the rule. I think he, all the positive things in the last 50 years Forrest Gump did. <laughs> ah, okay. That makes sense. He didn't cause any assassinations as far as I know. That's the other character. Well, that's not really causing. He was just trying to be sweet and saying that he believed in JFK. I, but um, anyway. That was Forrest Lump who did Forrest that. Forrest Lump. Uh, He's responsible for all the negative things the last 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of what I can do to this. Because there's so many... Forrest Trump. That's too many things changed. No, no, no. I moved the T over and <laughs> added an R. No, you can only you can do one thing. So I reckon Forrest Lump... He's basically, basically it is the plot of Forrest Gump, but it's more sinister. But like, probably it's rather than a story of like an uplifting story where things get happier. Although, was it a happy ending? Did he die? I think he grew really old and then he became... He had a kid though. He had many children, if I remember properly. No, he had one kid. He had a whole team of children. <laughs> but, but, Forrest, but Forrest Lump had a heap of kids, but they assembled him. Ah, gotcha. Um... And then he came into existence. He, did, he became more powerful. That's what that movie was about, is a man and his power. Yeah, but in Forrest Lump, he just gradually gets, he gradually gets less powerful, but doing all this awful stuff along the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, his life is like a box of chocolates. You take them all. <laughs> yeah, I remember that really dark scene from the movie where <laughs> he's like, he's talking to the mafia. And they're like, you owe us that $10,000. And he's like, life is like a box of chocolates. You got to take them all. And then he kills everyone. And then like inside the box is a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like flips it up. Life is like a box of chocolates. It's the best place to hide a gun. <laughs> Dives through the air, etc. Yeah. Okay, I like that one, Forrest Lump. Maybe it's more actiony. Maybe it's more actiony. I don't know why he's called Forrest Lump. That's just because he's not Forrest Gump. I mean, a gump is just a lump. It, with a different letter. Yeah. There's also Forrest Dump, which is like an ecological disaster documentary. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that one. <laughs> no one likes to talk about that documentary. It got a, it got that Emmy. Yeah. And then that was about that was about it. No one wants to talk about it. It's too gross. Um. So I'm looking at Skater Boy by Avril Lavigne. How, Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne. It's Avril Lavigne. How do you, Avril. How do you think it's Avril Lavigne? <laughs> Avril Lavigne. I. I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm the musical dyslexic person. So I'm looking at Skater Boy by Anvil Lasagna. And um, I think, can we get some more numbers in there? Or can we change it to Skater Box? Oh, Skater Box. What's the plot of Skater Box? Or what's the song Skater Box like? like? Ah, the song Skater Box. He was a box. (laughs) (laughs) She was a girl. Can I make it any more obvious? (laughs) 
It's just a love story with this amazing cardboard box that learns how to ride a skateboard. Or did they skate the box? Well, in the end, they team up and she skates on top of the box, riding the skateboard, and they win the skate dance. Yeah. <laughs> Give me your skater boy. Um, I don't know, like sk- seven uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so like seven deadly sins or whatever the movie is. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. just it's like seven the movie. Yeah. Oh, just any any number really. What's a bet? Sk- three, uh, boy. <laughs> that would be like skier boy. Sk- no, it's 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 literally it's still three. It's not an e. It's not late. It's just sk- three, a boy. <laughs> What's sk- three, a boy about? Um, you know, I don't know what a sk- three is, but it's like a skater, but not as good. <laughs> it's it's five less. Like, you have skaters. They're up here. They're real good. Skithrias is just like, yeah, okay. He gets on the thing and then run. Like, he, they're the guys at the skate parks who don't have a skateboard and they just run up and down the ramps. <laughs> yeah, you don't get skating powers till at least level five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta earn that. That's just a fact. You gotta start off just, just running running around. I mean, the first Skawana boy, I guess, is just walking. <laughs> yeah. Skatua boy is rolling. Skatria boy is rolling and walking up and down ramps. Damn, this must be some good skater boy then. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, like, I guess he's a he's a professional. He's a level eight skater. The level scale only goes up to nine. I think skater is where you start being a skater. Before that, you're like maybe like roller seven is rollerblades. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> something that makes sense. Imagine rollerblades, right? But like they're 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 like samurais or ninjas or something like that, and they're rollerblades because they're on rollerblades, but they have swords. That's terrifying. I don't want to think about that. And they're just like, <laughs> it's like a like a standard like dance dance off movie like Blades of Glory, um, but it's rollerblade based, and they kill each other. That's an unrelated movie concept. Not really. That's not really Skater Boy, but I mean, it could be. That could be Seven a Boy. <laughs> My next favorite's Breaking Bad. I've got one for that. Have you got any? Uh, I will figure one out right now, but you tell me yours. So, Breaking Glad, I think. Again, again, you're changing it too much, but I'm going to allow it this time. I think, I think, I think we can be a bit more flexible. I think as long as it's a funny word, it can be fun. You don't give a damn. You don't care about the rules. I don't care about the rules. I don't care about the good yarn at the end of the day. Uh, I think Breaking Glad is basically, it's a lot like Breaking Bad, but instead of like a, 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 a chemistry teacher becoming a meth drug lord, it's about a meth drug lord getting back to his roots, starting a family. He becomes a chemistry teacher and just finally gets like chill and happy with his life. Okay. So it's kind of like that reverse movie concept. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like that, but it's also more like the standard movie concept in that it's a redemption story rather than a yeah. Breaking Bad being the opposite of a regular story where you start to hate the character. In the very first episode of Breaking Bad, what, is he super happy? No, no. I guess it's not the exact opposite then. Damn it. I guess if it was to be the exact opposite, then he'd get really like disempowered and sad at the end. <laughs> like, man, I wish I was still a drug lord. <laughs> But then there's also Breaking Fad. Okay. Which is kind of like, you know, Beyblades or Pokemon cards. Any sort of standard thing. It's probably a documentary. But it could be a... S- Wait, is this is this a fad that is breaking in or a fad that is getting broken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fad that's just breaking out. Okay. Wait, do you mean breaking in is in the opposite of breaking out? I don't know what these words mean anymore. Like, there's a new, there's a new breaking fad. It's breaking into buildings. Yeah, but what if you're like, we have to break this fad? With pogs. I mean, like, that sounds like the council of teachers at any school I grew up at. <laughs> Whenever they're like, let's play with yo-yos, and the kids have a great time, the teacher's like, get that shit out of here. Although, to be fair, when we when the Beyblade cra- uh, craze did strike our school, we did kick in all the bottom of the bins. Why? Because in Beyblades, they had a Beyblade stadium dish that you Beybladed in to, like, to, like, focus the Beyblades towards each other. Oh, so you guys created a bespoke... Battling ground using the bins. Yeah, but they were like horribly kicked and dented. Like it wasn't like a smooth. Is that why all the bins were dented? Yes. Holy shit. That was the Beyblade craze. <laughs> all the bins were dented into the bottom. They were caved in and never right. That's why we kept doing it. I never knew this. Yeah, that was Beyblades. I just thought all the bins were just dented. Blame Japan. <laughs> I just thought we had some vandals. <laughs> we did, but there, we had a, there was a reason for the vandalism. This is some fight club shit. <laughs> like this underground society that kicks the bins in for a reason. Breaking blades. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say, what about we go breaking bard? <laughs> it's essentially breaking bad, but set in the a fantasy world 
in the <laughs> olden times. And there's this bard who's doing real bad and he decides to become... Well, he, what, his problem is that he's neutral good and he just can't handle it. <laughs> Everyone keeps taking advantage of him. So he, he decides to break bard and um, he turns into uh, neutral evil. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a drastic slight shift. Yeah, it goes for 13 seasons. It's not that good. <laughs> it's like a, a very gradual change to like bit by bit. They're like, oh, he's, he's went from neutral good to neutral neutral with that decision <laughs> this is a slippery slope down to neutral evil but not chaotic evil <laughs> never chaotic evil i like to think yeah but in the fantasy settings barding is actually very much i think if you're actually to ever apply to look under the hood of what's happening in those worlds and you find if it turns out there is no magic and it's all secretly science fiction bards who very clearly are impacting people's like moods and all of that are clearly using drugs yeah they're like, it's like a vapor thing. Like they just they got these guitars which shoot out like angry waves, and it's actually a <laughs> fine mist of pheromones. And people go, <laughs> and that's why they're angry. That's why that makes me. That's how bards work. They're just they're just elaborate drug dealers. So it's basically Breaking Bad again. I mean, that's just what all popular musicians are, aren't they? Elaborate drug dealers. Isn't that how music works? It's just yeah. I mean, it's just the drugs of the ears. Yeah, all right. ear drugs. I got one more, and I want to do a podcast because. That's what we're doing. This isn't a song. Um, and I want to do Welcome to Night Vale. Well, welcome to, to Night Vale? Did you just add a question mark? <laughs> welcome to Night Vale? I did. Welcome to Night Vale. Welcome to Right Vale. Right Vale sounds like a chill place to live. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but like, I don't know, everyone's, like... They're too right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it'd be one of those things where it turns out everyone's eating each other. Oh, I got a better one. Welcome to Night Vape. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a scary club. It's kind of like rap battles, but they're vape battling. Oh my God. They're going like, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's a dragon. <laughs> well, he did a smoke ring. Oh, he did a smoke sphere. Think they just like <laughs> vapes out a fist and punches him. <laughs> oh man, that's an anime. He vapes out some hurtful words. <laughs> <laughs> just like your mother was a cow oh he like vape they both like vape out these figures that then fight each other <laughs> it's like <laughs> Beyblade. back to Beyblades where they have the monsters that emerge from the Beyblades they have um vape beasts <laughs> <laughs> I think we're overestimating the power of vapes and their details but the future will fix it I think we're using up all our vape material forever with this podcast episode but <laughs> yeah I think we're gonna take this, a, a vape vacation <laughs> after this yeah, but this is the anime vape show. They, it's, I don't know. It's called vape. It's called Welcome to Va <laughs> Welcome to Night Vape, the anime, and they're like really extreme about their vape and, and having vape battles. Oh shit! And like, I guess they're trying to sell vapes because I mean, any anime is selling something. Oh yeah, they're trying to sell vapes to children. That's like the one, number one <laughs> yeah. thing animes do. And the and the and the, the schools have to crush this craze. <laughs> Kids are fighting with their vape. Um. They're having va they're, they're having vape beasts battles. <laughs> They probably wouldn't do much too much damage because they are literally just smoke creatures, but... They're going around kicking in bins to make a little battleground for their tiny vape um, beasts. <laughs> um, another one would be Welcome to Fight Vale. They overlap. They do overlap a lot, but Fight Vale is more like an underground fight club, but it's an entire town. <laughs> and so we have this... We follow this... Uh, I think he's Canadian cop. And he's like really polite and he's like, oh, hey, hey, yeah, how are you doing? Yeah. And he like goes into this town and it's full of all these strange characters and everyone's shirtless and they're fighting. And then he gets trapped in there for eight seasons. <laughs> kind of like, um... He has to learn to be impolite and fight. <laughs> like Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> he goes from being a, a pleasant person to a, the king of the fight town. <laughs> it's kind of like that kid's show Lazy Town. Yeah. But Fight Town, there's lots of musical numbers. I mean, Lazy Town is not a kid's show anymore. It's a meme. It's a, yeah, yeah. Well, this is so is this. The adults took that from the children. The children no longer get to enjoy it. I'm sure they enjoy it a little. Nah, the kids are like, Ugh, I don't want to look at that. That's a meme. <laughs> kids hate memes. I've heard that. Kids hate them. Memes are for, are for adults, not for children. Exactly. You reckon there's like at schools these days, I mean, I haven't been at school since the memes have really taken off. They've tried to ban memes, like there's kids trading memes under desks and all of that. And they're all like, 
trying to like stop it from happening. Yeah, well, they see the thing is they can um, they can ban the IPs and they can stop they can block the websites and the places, but they can't stop hand to hand exchangements of text written um, meme ideas, <laughs> handwritten <laughs> memes. Oh man, you know what someone needs to do? Put memes in the packets of chips. Oh man! <laughs> like here's a what meme did you get on your meme Tarzo? Jesus, it's. It's a really postmodern deconstruction of something random. It's a picture of you holding the packet of chips, getting the meme out. <laughs> and it says, I'm dumb. <laughs> letters <laughs> underneath it. Whoa, that one's rare. Let's vape. <laughs> Kids these days. Classic children. That's, a, that's, that's, that's how I assume it is. I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Like, we got chip memes and we got kids with vapes. They're doing that bottle trick, but like seriously, and that's how they establish dominance. Like where you where you smash a bottle over someone's head and stab them with it. No, that's a different. That's a welcome to fight veil <laughs> trick. No, this trick is the one that millennials <laughs> love, where they they have a half filled bottle of water. Um, Two hundred and fifty milliliters is the um, Olympic value, um, and <laughs> they throw it in the air and they hope that it lands upright. Ah. And if you can do that, and then you get a Tazo. If you can do that, you establish dominance in the herd. What if you do that and also vape into it as it flies up? <laughs> Stop this madness! Like you vape into it and then it lands with the vape in it. No, what you do is you vape the shape of the spot that the bottle is going to land and then you throw the bottle into it so it lands perfectly. Kind of like when they split an arrow with, <laughs> with another arrow. I think we've... I feel like this is how the main character wins on um, Welcome to Vape Night Vape. Okay, I think we've had... Well enough fun here. Um, thank you for listening to our dumb show about all this garbage. Um, we're definitely going to take a vacation from this vape discussion. A, a vape vacation. And if you want to chat to us in the meantime, we'll be back next week. But we're at But Yeah Pod on Twitter. And we'd just love to talk to you. We post fun polls every now and then. You can also find us on the But Yeah podcast group on Facebook. Um, you're very welcome there. Come join in and we post polls there as well and random pictures and stuff related to this they're not all about vapes i cannot stress this enough we are not a vaping podcast not yet not yet that is the dream though um <laughs> we have a uh, a couple of collaborations coming up um but i'll talk to you about those either on twitter or next week when they've already happened in case like there's a giant fire you cliffhanger person yeah you zeb is dying everyone he's going away so you're going to have to come vote to keep him on the show. Uh, no, he's not. He's very healthy. He's the healthiest person I know. I'm not dying. He's, I'm, I'm fine. he's getting taller by the day. He's getting stronger and more powerful every time we talk. And I'm very proud of him and his Twitter account now. I can tweet now. Find me. I'm dang winter. <laughs> Except you really can't tweet. I can. I've, I've tweeted three times now. I sent you a picture of Twitter for dummies and you asked how to retweet it. No, I, I did retweet it. I don't believe you. But in the retweet, I didn't realize I was retweeting it. Anyway, we'll talk to you next time. Twitter's complicated, guys. This has been the But Yeah podcast and we'll see you next time. Have a good. Bye. Thank you.